everybody, and welcome to the long-awaited return of uh, Challenge Runs in the Binding of Isaac. If you're not familiar with what Challenge Runs are, basically by using either Cheat Engine or uh, Spider Mod, which is what I'm using right now, you can create some custom Challenge Runs that you can do, make the game harder, make it more interesting, uh, just to add some novelty into it. Some of these are going to be zany, some of them are going to be fun, some of them are going to be hit and miss, but we're going to start with a simple one, and it's one that I've done before. And basically, the conditions for this Challenge Run is that we have infinite item power and teleport, and we can't walk through doors. It's a very simple challenge run just to get us back into the swing of things uh, and, you know, start me thinking about not necessarily worrying so much about min-maxing or anything like that anymore. Uh, well, not anymore, but for now. Uh, so basically, I can't enter any room of my own volition. The only way I can enter a room is by actually teleporting to it. So we're probably in for a lot of, you know, zany circumstances as we find ourselves uh, trying to make our way through doors that are seemingly just inaccessible to us. For example, hey, there's also the possibility of this happening. And we're going to pick up that Eternal Heart because I don't know if we're actually going to have the opportunity to ever get back to that room again. So this is the kind of silliness that I'm hoping is going to prevail on a run like this. And I hope you guys enjoy challenge runs. Uh, I enjoyed doing the... Oh, we went back to that room. Uh, I enjoyed doing challenge runs the first time that we did challenge runs. Uh... But you just kind of, they dried up after a while, you know, like 200 challenge runs or something like that, 150 challenge runs, and, you know, after a while, you just start to uh, run into the same ones over and over again, and that's A-OK, -okay. but I, I think after, now that I've taken a, a decent amount of time off from them, hopefully we'll uh, be able to have a renewed vigor, if you will, like when your uh, boyfriend or girlfriend goes away for a little while, or, you know, the object of your affection goes away for a little while, that's what they say, absence makes the heart grow fonder, right? Absence also makes the fart grow fonder, but that's another thing that we'll talk about a little bit later uh, when I'm not trying to be so romantic, perhaps. So we're just fighting little Steven. Uh, obviously, one of the things that's really scary about uh, having to teleport is that you never know when you're going to be able to fight a boss. So normally you can, you know, be like, okay, we, we're going to have a difficult boss maybe on this floor. It's going to be mom. Or That's another thing that's terrible is that we'll just guarantee ourselves a fight against mom uh, and probably before we go to the item room. Or at least there's a decent chance that it'll be before we go to the item room. Um, but... Uh, yeah, normally you have that, that opportunity, for, or opportunity for strategy, I should say, but we don't have that. What we do have are x-ray goggles. Those are completely meaningless on this run, but uh, weirdly enough, they did take us like directly to the item room soon after. Uh, I am trying to get back to this boss room, but I guess we might not have the opportunity to do so. As for whether or not this is easier or more difficult than in, uh, your standard Isaac run, I think that uh, this one is actually a little bit more difficult. And I say that, I can't believe I haven't lost this Eternal Heart, by the way. Uh, I say that because, let's teleport a couple more times. Okay, that's a, a spiked room. We have one more room to go to, and then I can safely go down to the next floor. At some point, I may, you know, cooler heads may prevail, and I may not just force myself to go to absolutely every single room here. Actually, there's two rooms left to go to. Oh, that was, I'm glad we came back to that one, because we can protect our Eternal Heart a little bit. Come on, there's two rooms left! But anyway, I, I think this run is a little bit harder than your uh, standard Isaac run because we don't have any choice with our spacebar item, and the spacebar item that we have is actually pretty bad, uh, all things considered. Beyond that, you know, there are some things that make it slightly easier. We should be able to get to all item rooms uh, and all shops, even if it just takes us a while. Uh, we can go to curse room still if we're interested, and now I guess we'll just teleport ourselves. I, I, the rule that I set for myself the first time I did this challenge, by the way, is that as soon as every room is explored, then I can walk through doors. Because if we go to that last room, I don't want to spend 20 minutes trying to teleport myself into the boss room. That's just going to take forever. Uh, instead, we'll spend 19 minutes teleporting us into this other room and then just walk into the boss room in all likelihood. Okay, I'm going to give this like another five tries because the game is trolling the shit out of me. So that's one, two. Oh, this is the, the other room. So now we can actually just walk out. Okay. So that was our very first floor. Uh, I kind of feel like I want the run to move a little bit faster, so I don't want to necessarily shoot all this poop. I think that's going to be a little irritating, but that's a okay. So, interesting uh, kind of payout for us there. Floor 1 took us a lot longer than it normally does, but it was fun nonetheless. Uh, and we got an HP upgrade in Little Steven. That's an okay payout. Uh, I didn't use that key on purpose. It's okay, we'll start teleporting. It's actually worse for me uh, that I did that, but hey, this makes uh, Curse Rooms actually much more valuable. Let's see what the pill does. If it was telepills, that would have been pretty funny, but it's not. Uh, we'll make sure we get this key, just in case there are golden chests. Uh, that'll mean, uh, or that'll be one of the few situations where we actually need keys at this point. We want to make sure that, uh, if possible, we get enough money to go to that secret room again, because getting the map... Actually, getting the map is meaningless, isn't it? Because we're not trying to make our way into a room. This is... Again, I, when I talk about Universal Item Pools runs, I'm like, oh, it changes the meta so much, that's why I like it. I wonder if it's even worth buying the map in this situation. It seems like it wouldn't be. Um... We have a mini boss fight against Pride here, but yeah, in uh, Universal Item Pools runs, I'm always like, well, it forces you to think independently and like value rerolls and blah blah blah, um, or you know, change how you value rerolls re and blah blah blah. 
Um, but, uh... This is, like, every challenge run forces you to think very differently as well, which I think is 90% is of the fun, and the, the fact that there's some variety is really nice. So, we'll teleport around just a little bit more. Our item room has Mr. Boom in it, which is absolutely terrible. Two more rooms, and we'll be able to go to our uh, boss fight independently if we don't get the opportunity. Hey, there's one of them. Uh, if we don't get the opportunity to just teleport in there right away. The good news is, and this is cheating a little bit, but I guess after I fight Mom, uh, normally that would be really disappointing because I might miss out on an item or a shop, but I could just teleport out of that fight and then uh, have a chance to get a deal with the devil afterwards as well. Who knows? I'm not sure if teleport can actually teleport you to a deal with the devil room, by the way. I know it, in Spider Mod there's a fix that lets teleport pills take you to the deal with the devil uh, room, which, you know, only seems fair. Red chests can teleport you to the deal with the devil room, but maybe that's something that's supposed to just happen for red chests exclusively because red chests are kind of demonic. I don't know. But for now. Uh, we are just gonna finish off Monstro here. We still, you know, in a, lost in the novelty of this run is the fact that there's still a run here. I can't just go to Deals with the Devil, by the way, because I have to teleport into them. But, um, yeah, there's still a run here. We still need the same things you need on a uh, normal Isaac run. I need damage. I need, uh, HP. We got some HP there. Um, please, let me go to this final room. I guess this is where the fun happens, but still, I thought about buying something there. I would rather, I don't, we don't even need a compass. I don't know what we actually need because battery and 9 volt and nuns habit are actually worthless for us because we have infinite item power. Uh, it's a very good question, isn't it? I don't know. I guess, uh, nothing in the shop could actually be worthwhile except for, uh, consumables. Yeah, so maybe I should just buy, uh, like keys and maybe spirit hearts. I don't know. But I have, uh, gotten to the point where I can leave this floor. So let's floor two in the books. Not particularly strong for where I'd like to be at this point, but we're alive, and that's that's strong enough. Uh, since the Bible is already, you know, it's going to show up in the shop, and it's an item that is not going to be any worse than any of the other items in the shop, apparently. I don't see any reason for us to not at least pick up the extra spirit hearts by way of uh, the rosary. Might not be the greatest pickup, but, you know, certainly the only other option, because I don't have the D6, is just to leave them on the ground. So, that is not going to be great for us. By the way, there is a... Please suggest your uh, challenge runs in the comments below, and I'll, I'll look at the ones that I, I see and, and deem most appropriate. In Spider Mod, there is a way, uh, and a very easy way, to hold a spacebar item, like teleport, for example, and still have the ability to reroll. There's just a hotkey, and if you click it uh, or press the button, uh, then it'll use a D6 or a D20 reroll, depending on which one you want. And uh, then uh, you can basically have the spacebar item that you want for your challenge run. Ah, that's so bad for me. Uh, and that was even worse. You can have the spacebar item that you want for your challenge run, but additionally, uh, you can have, uh, the D6 functionality as well, which I think is a really, it, it opens up a few more doors, I guess, when it comes to, uh, cool, uh, applications, I guess you should say. So there's the Bible. Kind of want to buy it so it doesn't show up again, but I think it's actually worthless, because if it shows up again, it doesn't matter, because all of the, uh, items in the shop are fairly likely to not be that useful for me. Oh, I forgot. I should have picked up the money. That was stupid of me not to pick up the money, at least. Um, but I forgot that I can't just walk into that boss room despite finding it. But that's okay. So far, this run's going pretty well. I don't give us a great chance of actually making it, uh... Especially on floors like the Cathedral and the Chest. It's a double-edged sword, right? We could either get to the boss really quickly, uh, and skip a lot of the floor, which could be good or bad. Or we could take forever to get to the boss and end up fighting, like, every single room. But, this time we actually got to the boss pretty quickly. Uh, not that this is a major problem for us here. We got a spirit heart back for the one I lost, and a key as well. Oh, never mind. There it goes. I, I really wanted my bombs to actually work. I think this one will. My god, just ever so slightly off. That's okay. Uh, give me some more damage here, and if I could just teleport to the deal with the devil room, I would be a, an extremely happy man. I'm glad that these guys are all in one big line, or at least were until I completely jinxed myself. Do you guys ever have that one friend? There's always one friend in every group. It takes jinx too seriously. And I'm not just bringing up, like, a How I Met Your Mother reference here. What's our tarot card? Death. Well, I still need to go to every room before I can actually leave. Ooh, thank you. Uh, second secret room. Yeah, but there's always one friend who's like, you know, you say the same thing at the same time. You're like, my prediction to win the Super Bowl is the C Seahawks jinx. And then you're like, okay, you got me, dude. And then, you know, I kind of just want to teleport out of this room, but I guess that's a little scummy, huh? Um... And then, you know, you try to have a conversation, and he's like, nah, dude, you can't talk. I jinxed you. And you're like, well, that's cool, but I'm not eight, and, like, I want to have, you know, a conversation with my friends who are also adults or, or near adults. And then, 
you know, you're, you're kind of making it, you're making yourself out to look like a big weirdo, you ding dong. And he's like, dude, I jinxed you. Like, the, the jinx is the only thing that has meaning in my life ever since my fiance left me. And I'm like, man, I, I shouldn't have used a death card like that, uh, obviously. It's like, I, I apologize, Jim. I forgot that, uh, you know, you're going through some personal strife right now. But seriously, dude, I just want to be able to talk to my friends without having to engage in schoolyard games. It's like, Having to get punched in the arm every time you see a Volkswagen Beetle. This is stuff we did before we could buy alcohol and entertain ourselves. Anyway, that's the story of Jim, the man who I just made up, who has no bearing on anybody in my actual real life. No, it's not true. I'm Jim. I kind of want to just go down to the next floor, to be honest with you, because it's a little tedious to just like go back and forth here to try to get to these few remaining rooms. Uh, I don't necessarily feel like it's cheating to just go through to the boss. Like, I. I realize that that is going through a door, so technically maybe that shouldn't count, but I think I'm gonna, you know, bend my own rule. After I beat the boss, if I teleport myself to uh, the boss room again, I think I should be able to walk down. That's my choice. But we'll see. Uh, if that ends up actually being something that's relevant. For now, teleport is done. I mean, the problem with the teleport is that teleport itself doesn't give us... We're gonna stick with Bad Trip. Teleport itself doesn't give us the opportunity to actually uh, go to... The deal with the devil room or an I am error room. So we lose out on a lot of the value of teleport, I think. Uh, but this is a run that is mostly here for humor's sake, just to pull the curtain back a little bit. Uh, because that uh, is the main value of this run. But I gotta solicit some more challenge run suggestions and uh, we'll, we'll get some good stuff going. Don't worry about it. They start in earnest and they started in earnest last time as well, but they ended in earnest goes to the army. I don't know. Was there a first earnest film called Earnest? Earnest scared earnest? I don't know. They would. Let's teleport until we get closer to the boss room, and we actually got into the boss room, which is great. Yet another HP upgrade, and we're on the Catacombs Part 2. It's been uh, not a quick run so far, but we will get another pill here. It's a range upgrade. Goes well with Bad Trip, I guess, because it's just something we can use once and then move onwards from. And we will play the shit out of this blood bank, because we should be able to get uh, a lot of value out of it. In particular, money, but also the blood bag would be a great pickup. We might not be able to come back to this room, but I'm very unlikely to gamble. Uh, very, very unlikely to gamble, uh, because it's just gonna take forever, and this run's already a little bit of a meandering one, which is not a bad thing. Authentic Bulgarian meander. Yes, I understand that I'm losing spirit hearts here. That's because I don't know if I'm ever gonna get back to this room, so I'm kinda going ham on this thing here, uh, and I did it so I could get this full health pill and then start gambling on it again. And assuredly, this will pay out, right? Even if it plays out with the blood bag, or sorry, the IV bag, which it did, at least it paid out with something. So now we know future blood banks are going to pay out with uh, the blood bag, if I just give them enough time. So Child's Heart is actually a trinket that maybe we can use. And we've teleported ourselves into a fight with the Fallen, which is a little scary, but it's not like we were going to get much stronger on this floor anyway. We'd already been to the item room. We could possibly get something from the shop, but it may or may not have been good. Uh, with my range, I'm able to just kind of hang out on the other side of the map, and pretty soon, uh, the Fallen's going to enter that state, and this bomb should hit both of them, and that's like the most damage that I'm going to do in one fell swoop uh, to the Fallen here. So, just hang out on the other side of the map. This has actually been a very, very easy fight, and this is one of the only ways, uh, obviously, that I can actually get a deal with the Devil. So, uh, I'm glad that this is happening. Hopefully, we'll end up picking up an item that is crazy good, or at least, you know, not a spacebar item that I can't pick up. That would be really disappointing. We'll see, though. Maybe we'll get lucky. You should be dead, like, right now. Yep. Guppy's Paw. Sure. Yeah, you know what? We're gonna double down on Guppy's Paw, even. Because I can't take it with me. Uh, I think I'm just gonna go straight up all spirit hearts right away. And that's a, a risky decision, but it's a decision I'm gonna make nonetheless. Hopefully we teleport to the Angel Room. Uh, I think that's actually, like, impossible, but... Our shop contains nothing of value. And remember, my new rule, next time I go to the item room, that means I can just, uh, or sorry, next time I go to the boss room, I can go down if I want to. We've already been arcade, boss room, item room, shop. So I feel like I could leave this floor in good conscience, even if it is disrespecting the integrity of the challenge run a little bit, which I don't necessarily think it is. But anyway, we've got a, a while to go here. I don't want to open that. We, our keys are actually still a little bit more precious to me than that. Uh, sure, it's a spiked room. I wish they could make some spiked punch, but if you're just gonna spike the room, I guess that's acceptable too. You can spike a football if you want to. You can name your dog Spike, especially if you're like in a motorcycle gang or something like that. Now, we'll just uh, take care of this greed head. We are in the catacombs, so the less people I have to fight, the better my life is gonna be. That's not really that much value, certainly not for a bomb. Uh, this is a scary room that I always fuck up. So let's, first things first, there's just money available. 
Follow the money. That's what Gordon Gecko taught me. Steven, if you could stop shooting the uh, the neutral flies poop, that would be great for me. I think what I'm going to do is just hang out uh, over here. We'll take out this neutral fly. And then I should be able to sneak some shots in on uh, this guy and get him out of the picture before he's able to really cause me major worries. Although the neutral flies are being real annoying. All right, well, we let the bomb kill that one, so that's fine. Uh, spike secret room again, or sorry, spike uh, curse room. Self-sacrifice room. I always get them confused. Self-sacrifice room, I suppose, is the one where you hurt yourself multiple times. The curse room is the one that you just walk into. Range upgrade's great. Uh, obviously, I don't want to lose much more HP. Any more HP would be ideal, but uh, that's not realistic. Let's do some more teleportation here. More pills. Can't really do anything with those. Take me to the boss room. Save my life here. I don't, I, I don't want to open the golden chest and then just teleport away. I think that's a scum tactic, and I'm not, I wouldn't be proud of myself for doing that. I couldn't sleep at night or in the early afternoon. Uh, let's just keep this up then, I guess. We're going to hold the right button down and let little Steven do the vast uh, majority of the damage. Thank you for coming around the corner there, Greedhead, making my life way easier. And I don't know how much health we have overall with these spirit hearts, but obviously once we get the, the Polaroid, uh, this is going to make me a little bit stronger. And maybe give us a realistic chance. There is, of course, always a chance that we could become Guppy as well. It just strikes me as extremely unlikely. Especially now that we can't take deals with the devil. So, Necropolis 1. Start teleporting around and hoping that we find our secret item shop and boss rooms as soon as possible. I really almost teleported out of the way of that shot, which probably would have been in bad faith. Losing way more health than I feel comfortable with. I think I am a little uh, weaker. I'm probably stronger defensively than I would be on an average run at this point, but way weaker, uh, or at least a little weaker offensively, which is a dangerous position to be in. Curse room is just a troll bomb, so we'll just teleport out. Item room is unfortunately a range upgrade, uh, and we're fighting the bloat here. This promises to be kind of a tricky fight. As long as we can keep him in our sights, I don't know why I stood there. I, I, I think I thought I was fighting Peep or something. As long as I keep him within our sights, I should be reasonably uh, able to do damage, but it's it's going to be a long, kind of drag-out fight here. Even this, which is kind of an outlier in terms of the amount of time that Bloat is not jumping, we've still only done like 30% of his total health, so uh, I'm getting very lucky, but also I'm aware of the fact that uh, that is not going to continue in all likelihood. Very much got trapped between a rock and a hard place there. Uh, but at least I, I didn't take two hits of damage there, which was absolutely a possibility. Thank you for not summoning the creep. That would have put me in a, an awful position there. And now you'll come back down this way. And again, kind of got stuck between a rock and a hard place there. But this is good. Uh, we've gotten a little bit more damage done. And what do, what do I want at this point? Actually, HP upgrades at this point are actually bad for me, basically objectively. It depends. You could maybe justify meat or something like that. Uh, but we're never going to be able to, to keep it, so... Or we're never going to be able to keep permanent Polaroid invincibility if we take it, but the damage upgrade might be suitable. So I really want something like the Pentagram or a Tears upgrade. Uh, you know... Oh, that's really nasty. The, uh... The crate could be okay. The pills are actually fine, too. Uh, we get two more range upgrades. That's basically meaningless at this point because we've had so many already. And... A range downgrade, which is meaningless because we've had so many range upgrades. And friends till the end, so basically nothing is what we got out of that. Uh, I am already getting cluster bombed by these massive infamy. Excuse me. You're not. Al you got me trapped in the freaking corner here. That's very much not allowed. It's bad sportsmanship. You know, in boxing when this happens, they have a referee. The referee comes in and says, hey, break it up. Where's my referee? Edmund McMillan, where's my referee? I need. I am actually going to lose like five spirit hearts in this room. I am doing. My best, I swear to your life, I swear on your mother's life, not my own mother's life, because then if, if that actually goes wrong, then ooh, I don't want to be held responsible for that. Um, but, you know, I swear on, on other people's lives, and I don't treat life with uh, disrespect, so that should let you know that I was not just throwing there for the case of throwing. There's just no value in that for me. Uh, thank you for destroying your teammate. Uh, you'll probably do the same thing again if I just hang out over here. Maybe. Thank you. I did take some damage there. I'm not proud of myself. I am, at this point, just going to be happy if I beat Mom, I think. Teleport around. Uh, was I allowed to teleport out of that room? It seemed like there were enemies there. I think I may have just made a boo-boo, and if so, I apologize. But hey, I can go down to the next floor, having gone back to our boss room for the second time. Death Spurt 2 is where things are going to start to get very, very interesting here, I think. I, I actually do think that just like on muscle memory, basically, I just teleported out as soon as I saw that room. So I apologize for that. You know, sometimes on these challenge runs, I, I leave 
and I get a new affinity for a knight. Like, that was uh, one of the actual challenge runs that we did. It was called New Affinity for something like that, or New Found Love of blah, blah, blah. Well, that uh, Fortune Teller did give me some good stuff, but uh, unfortunately, we can't really take it with us, so it's not a big deal. Um, yeah, like, New Found Appreciation for Wiggle Worm. That was a fun challenge run. I left it thinking, you know, Wiggle Worm is not the greatest item I've ever had, but it does give me something, and it's it's fun. Uh and in a very, very unique set of circumstances that I tailor myself, Wiggle Worm can be a, a valuable addition to an Isaac run. There, I said it. Uh, but I'm not leaving this run feeling that much stronger about my feelings about Teleport. Uh, I mean, Teleport is still, you know, an item that is pretty bad from a spacebar item perspective, and the fact that it can't take you to the I Am Air room or Deals with the Devil, apparently. I mean, and I'm, you know, not 100% sure about the Deals with the Devil thing, but it definitely cannot take you to I Am Error rooms. Uh, that makes it real nasty. I, I don't actually know where the value in, uh, in it lies if you can't actually use it to get extra items. I guess you can leave rooms that you would take damage on, but it's, it's a nasty item. It's just not very good, I think. Bad Trip is worthless for us. Hierophant is very important, uh, and we'll just teleport away. All right, this is a, a room and a half here. I, uh, yeah, I had a feeling. And I've gotten myself really kind of out of order on these guys. Just be smart and focus on the ones that you know are going to be problematic. Uh, I, again, lost, like, all of my spirit hearts from the hero font, but at least I had them to begin with, I guess. Otherwise, we'd be in an even more scary position. I think the mom fight's going to be, like, totally fine. It's more like the womb and beyond that frightens me, even if we do skip uh, half of those floors, just by virtue of having the teleport. Alright, curse room is uh, Guppy's head! It could happen! The dream is alive, but it's it's pretty unlikely. But if I do get the opportunity, obviously, to give up three spirit hearts for Guppy's tail, that's something that is uh, not even a question. I have to do it. I don't know if I'm ever going to get the opportunity to get to a deal with the devil, but anyway. It's okay, we'll just keep teleporting away a little bit more. Zambies with one bomb is not a not a nice position to find myself in. Just put this bomb down here. I got one zombie. Uh, my one bomb got one zombie. I guess somewhat fitting. It did open up a little bit more of the level though. Oh, careful. And that's great, uh, but also not really because I'm still getting my ass kicked. I think I just tailored myself to having like better runs, I think. So when I have worse runs, especially offensively, I'm like, oh, video games. No, it's I'm, I'm not anti-video game, as you might expect. That was really dumb damage. That was just me being frustrated. Now, fighting Chad is not going... Sorry, fighting Chubb, sorry, is not going to be my ideal fight at this point either. Didn't even realize there was an arcade here, which I should have because we've used the crystal ball. But, you know, I can't be held responsible for the items that's for the rooms that spawn on runs like this. I think we did catch him with a little bit of that TNT. I caught myself with that TNT. Uh, that's what I get for trying to speed up the fight. I should just learn to have a little bit more patience. You know, teleportation here, but like Nightcrawler. Sometimes it works well for us, other times it doesn't. But uh, if we just kill him and maybe. I don't know, at this point, we, we need to go to the item room, but I don't know. I don't even know if we, again, I was talking like, maybe I can get that deal with the devil because I'll teleport out of the mom fight, but I don't think it's going to work like that because I can't just walk into a deal with the devil. If I was going to do the, oh, I apologize, that was an accident. Um, if I was going to do this run again, I might say that if deals with the devil show up, it's okay for you to walk into them because otherwise it's just very, very difficult for us to reliably get damage. But I guess that's true of a vanilla Isaac run as well, so, you know, shows what I know. Let's just keep moving around a little bit here. And we should be able to maybe offer a decent fight against Mom. Tears Down is not what we needed to make that happen. This is the room that I teleported out of before. I think we actually have one less uh, angel fetus and just another like kind of floating uh, fetus. So I apologize for that. That was kind of a dickish move on my part. But uh, I assure you that it was by accident. You know, I'm going to have to fight all, all these rooms eventually, basically. So I don't gain that much by just leaving. There we go. It's a boss fight. We haven't been to our item room yet, though. So I'll probably continue teleporting. If we survive, uh, which is actually kind of up in the air because our damage is so gosh darn low. Uh, as you can see, I am not really doing very much damage at all to Mom here. And it's, you know, uh, going to be a war of attrition. It's going to take us a long time to get into a position where we can actually reliably do decent amounts of damage. Like, over the course of this entire fight, we've done probably about 10% of our total health. Which means it's going to be a marathon. So, you know, if you guys would just... Be so kind as to tell me all of your favorite, you know, like maybe 10 albums and 
video games and, and movies, and uh, we'll talk about that. I actually don't, uh, I used to be really into making, like, lists like that. Uh, you know, I watched High Fidelity and became enamored with it a little bit. It was like, top five herps that derp, basically. Apologies for, you know, memeizing and debasing myself there, but that's okay. It was a good way to explain it, I think. Um, and yeah, so I'd, like, really worry about it. I'd agonize over it. And I'd be like, oh man, what's like my number one favorite album of 1982? We all know it's Talking Heads Remain in Light, but let's put up the artifice that I'm trying at least to, to get some kind of uh, competition going here. And then like, I got older and I started like paying taxes and having responsibilities and I was like, you know what? I don't really, I, I, this is an album, I don't worry that, like, is this album better than this album? Is this game better than this game? Which is probably a bad position to have as a reviewer, but I, I just try to give my honest opinion and articulate it well enough for those. Um, but yeah, I'm just like, is this good? Do I like this? Yes. Well, is it better than, you know, is, is Strider better than Banished? I don't know. It's very difficult to compare those two games, you know? Is, is the Banished better than a, the Banner Saga? I don't know, that's another one that's, you know, they both got good things going for them. The only thing I know for sure is that, you know, both Banished and Strider and the Banner Saga are way better than Game Tycoon 1.5. Not Game Dev Tycoon. That game's uh, that game's all right. Uh, but Game Dev Tycoon, or sorry, Game Game Tycoon 1.5 is. Uh, I've recorded a video, but I haven't posted it yet because I, it's just vitriolic. But whatever. We're about to win this fight, so I can stop worrying about that. Uh, I can't take that HP, unfortunately. I will take the Polaroid, and we're teleporting away now. Probably a good idea to play this fortune teller as much as is humanly possible. But also, you know, let's set a cap for ourselves. We'll play it until we get down to 80 cents. Why 80 cents? Otherwise, it's going to be real freaking tedious. Like, have some sympathy for me here. I'm going to take a dr uh, drink of water while we wait. Actually just completed, like, that entire glass. That's okay. There's no, no danger of, uh, you know, holding your Wii for a Wii type situation. It's a really sad story. I know that it's like a radio punchline. But, if you're not familiar with the story, and you probably are, uh, at least if you're over a certain age, but anyway. Um, there, when the Nintendo Wii came out, believe it or not, everybody was going ape shit over it. Everybody was like, uh, oh, you know, I can just use universe, uh, like, uh, infinite item power to get uh, tons of flies. But when we leave this room, we'll only have like five of them, I think. But anyway. Um, and we could use Crystal Ball again, but let's not completely scam the game. Uh, yeah, the Nintendo Wii was like, the, it was the Tickle Me Elmo, it was the most hotly anticipated uh, product, and everybody wanted one, and they were very difficult to get. So there was this competition, I think it was by a radio station, actually, it was called Hold Your Wii for a Wii, and basically, like, I think you, uh, just, basically they gave you a lot of water, and then the person that held their urine in for the longest won this Nintendo Wii, which is actually, like, a really big prize. Oh, Piercing Shots is actually really nice. It was a really big prize back in the day when everybody and their dog uh, needed a Nintendo Wii, right? It was around Christmas. So th this lady doing the... Oh, I've done that to myself, haven't I? This lady doing the Hold Your Wii for a Wii contest actually ended up dying of, like, hyperhidrosis or something. I, I, I don't actually know the, the term for it. Uh, but basically, she she was overhydrated. And uh, I think she, she may have also had kidney failure or something like that as a result. But anyway, um, like there was a, she didn't have a good mix of solutes and solution, if that makes sense. Let's take our key here. I've been playing so, so badly on this run. Tears down is probably not a pill that we want. We will open this up. And we're almost, almost to the point where we can just go to the boss room and leave. Uh, oh, now we can. Can't take the HP upgrade. I gotta stick with this guppy permanent Polaroid invincibility charade. Uh, yeah, and she died and she was like trying to win a Nintendo Wii for her kid for Christmas. And then at first you're like, wow, she died holding her urine and what an idiot. And then afterwards you're like, that is a touching story of like a mother's love. Yeah, also, she's kind of a little silly. Um, she probably should not have held her urine in until she died, but she was just trying to do something that she loved for uh, someone in her family. That's, that's a very sweet story, I think. Oh, I'm going to teleport out of here before the enemies show up. That is probably cheating, but at this point, I am going to take every fucking advantage that I can get, because otherwise we'll be dead soon. And I always, I feel that way about a lot of deaths, and we actually got very lucky to finish this floor. Whenever the like, there's Darwin Awards and there's like, Hey, this dude's died, uh, shoved a firecracker up his asshole, and then, uh, you know, he exploded and died. And people are always like, yeah, good, fuck him. And I'm like, man, that dude loved the party. You know that the dude who's shoving the fireworks up his asshole was the life of the party. I don't like seeing people like that. I don't like seeing anybody be killed, but I don't like seeing deaths be celebrated for people like that. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry, but... I was about to go off on a tangent that I was actually quite fond of, but... I hope you guys enjoyed this run regardless. This is the, uh, it was a proof of concept that challenge runs are indeed returning. 
and I hope that you'll uh, be excited to watch them now that they are coming back. As always, thanks for watching. Suggest your challenge runs below, and I'll take a look at them. And of course, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. If you want to see more challenge runs, that would be appreciated as well. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.